terrifying centipede. Oh my god. Yeah. I have, like I said, I have seen something kind of funky here with like, yeah. out over on the road, but like on your way Million to the garden, legs. I've seen like millipedes. Oh. Is it millipedes or something? Centipedes I don't or know. millipedes? I don't know. Because these little guys They're are hard. Are I think these are millipedes. I think cool. the millipedes are smaller. Yeah, because milla and then centa would be bigger. So, I so think... how long have you been working in this type of kind of... About two years. Okay. About two years. But I've always like loved bugs well you know, I've, always, I've always like weird natural things i guess you could say so okay i've all i've always had like little bird skulls or you know i have like a dolphin vertebrae so yeah. uh, bones and and shells and stuff like uh -huh. that bugs i always thought were cool but i never really had anything to do with them so i didn't really collect yeah. dead bugs so much okay. but then, and then i've been here. finding more and more oh, so like look, look at, at this beautiful dragonfly. specimen and i've got all these like mm -hmm. little wings oh, you can so see cool. like dragonfly wings and stuff neat so i've been yeah so now and people know and i've got do they oh, send you stuff i've had friends send me stuff and i've got a really good dried <sighs> lizard collection going i've got awesome lots of dried lizards throughout here i had yeah. a dried mouse and big at some point in got the... some uh those are teeth from an opossum Wow. Yeah. So I got all yeah. kinds of weird and I've just been for about the last three years or something, two or three nice. years, really collecting a nice. bunch of weird things. Let's see. Yeah. You got a snake skin in there. The big snake skin. Cool. Bees, all kinds of stuff. Okay. So you have this kind of as your little archive <clears throat> of yeah. things and then you use the doilies and the, the lace as as kind of part of your art for for patterns yeah do you wash them or once you paint them they're painted yeah um yeah so once let's see because oh, you're using oil right ones. yeah so yeah. these ones a lot of times i'll just have like a model like hold them up and uh -huh. then i'll use the shadows but oh, yeah then i have okay. all the doilies that i've actually spray painted over and those okay. ones just yeah they just stay so you use these paint. for figure drawing with you a live model yeah well for that, um photograph for photograph yeah because i paint from photos okay yeah and then, so you've always kind of had this affinity towards yeah, these little just kind objects. of weird and then dry I love things. The, I love shells and stuff. Yeah. So when did it kind of turn into integrating it into the actual art that you're working on? Um, it was about two years ago that I started making this okay. kind of thing, but it was like it's always been something on the back of my mind. Mm -hmm. So I, when I was growing up, my dad did um, a lot of found object art and he would just find like he he would run on the beach um at like five in the morning so he would always find a million like little kids yeah. beach toys and stuff like mm -hmm. this and so when I was little he was always making these wacky little assemblages often out of found toys or found objects or skulls or whatever that is so fascinating I was so cool and he, my parents were slept and he lived in this little house and I would literally just be able to like explore in and out of this house and find like weird like it was like oh my god yeah it would be like in the backyard under a bush he would like throw in some concrete and then make like a little like army man, like battlefield and like under a bush in his backyard that you wouldn't even see, you know That's what amazing. I mean? Yeah. It was so satisfying. So ever since I've been really young, I've always mm -hmm. loved like little yeah, maquettes. Like, like when we were at yeah. the, at the opening, you were talking about how you love the maquettes. The, the miniature like the... maquettes. Yeah. I've, I've always just been super obsessed when I was little, I used to do the little shoe box, like, like, Oh, That's school so room cool. or all. Oh, yeah. Like, so it's just, it's been something like that's been marinating literally my entire life, but I was so determined to get as accurate as possible mm -hmm. as far as doing like figures and portraits that I basically put off being creative in a sense mm -hmm. with my work for 10 years, 12 yeah. years or something, because I was like, I want to do this right. I do not want to start going off into these crazy tangents until I can get the basics right. So yeah. although it was something that was kind of marinating, like I waited until I had the skills that I wanted to have. That's amazing. Yeah. 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 I love that story. What a great <laughs> childhood you yeah, had. Did, and it's really did. smart to take the process. And if you think about chunks of time in our lives, right? Like yeah. the last 10 or 12 years of my life before I started this were, you know, getting a lot of experiences of things that I didn't realize would help me make decisions of my right? next it, it, it part of my life. Up. It's amazing. Yeah. 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 Um, and you think you're on one path and then you're on another and you don't really realize it. So I'd love when you come back some, um, I would really love across the street on the campground side, uh -huh. some of those kinds of like found object things. Yeah. I wonder if we could ever do a workshop where we did like a scavenger hunt, um, like a weekend thing where we did yeah. like a scavenger hunt. We go to, around to some of the 
the thrift stores and the flea markets, mm -hmm. and then everyone had like their objects, and then we like w scampered off into the woods yeah, and did and stuff. Did we did one something like that one time in um, when I was in college. Mm -hmm. I was in a sculpture class and. One of them was um, we were supposed to do sculptures all over campus that were supposed to be kind of like hidden and you maybe mm -hmm. don't notice it. And I remember it was really fun because we had to like, it was like uh, two different days where we were showing each other's and we mm -hmm. would basically walk around and it's like, okay, do you see the art? And then you'd be like, oh, what's that thing up on the pole over there? Yeah. And so yeah, we hid stuff all over That campus. is really great. Yeah. I will definitely keep in touch with you about that yeah, because I obviously you're it. more of an expert in that than me. I'm yes. more of a advocate and a dreamer in it. <laughs> yes, and like, but, this I is mean, what I want, but I've so actually never yeah. really done that type of work. I'm just, um, I have an, uh, an admiration for yeah. it. So I think that'd be fun. Yeah. yeah now, sure. when you were working in these, how did you figure out the process that you use and was that like an aha moment for you of how to take sort this of, into yeah. the three dimensional resin thing? Yeah. Is it that you just kind of like discovered this resin or were you doing research? Was no, I was never there like done an aha resin moment. Well, okay. I'm sorry. I had done resin before actually with a, an ex-boyfriend. We had, we had um, bought these blanks. Okay. And so, and then we put all these belt buckles in. So I actually put this Bertha in there okay. and we would do like monopoly money or get out of jail yeah. cards and stuff. So I had worked with resin one other time doing that. Okay. And then how did it happen? I knew I wanted to do box. Oh, I know what I had been doing. So I had built, I think I just made one and I had built like a little shadow box. It was like a little eight by eight shadow box. Mm -hmm. And I was using, I was like suspending things in there. So it made like a little TV, Layers. 3D template, uh -huh. but it just, it, things were kind of loose and they would shake, yeah. you know what I mean? And it just wasn't super secure. Right. And so, and that was before, no, that was right after I'd gotten out of graduate school. And then, um, and then I went to France for a while and then moved to Hawaii. So there was like about six months in there where I just couldn't do anything, do anything yeah. else. You know what I mean? And then, yeah. And then I kind of took a break from it. And then two years later was when I started doing the resin. So again, it's been this long marinating right. process. And I don't remember right. exactly when the aha was like, oh, I could do that with resin. But I remembered wanting to do these shadow box things again uh -huh. and not really knowing how to make them secure. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I think that's a really good example of how the creative process can't be forced. Yeah. And Seriously. sometimes you have to allow, and that term marination, right? Yeah. Allow other things in your life to happen for the process to take place. And Absolutely. sometimes it's happening in your brain while you don't well, you know don't it. it. For sure. And then all of a sudden when the freedom of the space and time occur yeah the magical thing ingredient that you need is there, is there when you need it and it took i mean it literally took a lifetime of me like of course being very young and mm -hmm. loving the little shadow box things and mm -hmm. then deciding to learn how to do figures very well and then um i started doing my own framing so my mom had taught me how to oh. make my own frames Right. So you needed that skill needed before that you could do the other thing. I do this. Yeah. So then at that point, I was comfortable making my own frame. So, yes, yeah, so right. it was a very slow building process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a lot awesome. Of patience. Yeah, it's good. And I mean, honestly, I have learned a lot of patience in a lot of ways. I'm not even going to lie. This has shown me a lot of patience. Your hair. When you have to wait for like six years for your hairstyle to do what you want. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to wait like another six years for right. any kind of other progress. Yeah. Yeah. Like, honestly, I have learned a lot of patience. Does it take you six years to get that? And, uh, that these are, way? My hair is now almost 16 years. Wow. Actually, March 2000. Yeah. So March 2004 was when I stopped brushing my hair when I started dreading it. Wow. And my hair was all the way down to here. Well, see, that and helps. It shrunk up and it shrunk all the way to here in that first but year. But see, it helps that you have straight hair because I haven't cut my hair in like five or six years. And wow, it's still like it's still so short. a big mop wow, that crazy. I can put on top of my head. Yeah. Now I do wash it Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. because yeah. otherwise it would be... <laughs> It would, I, it would get that yeah. that way much faster. Yeah. But no, it's funny because like, or, or like, you know, things would look funny or your hair looks kind of rough. And I didn't do the like, people didn't put in my dreads. Like yeah. I waited. My hair took like nine or 10 months to lock up. Wow. Like it was rough that first year. Yeah. But I was following the dead and I was, you yeah. know, whatever, doing all kinds of things and nobody cared. But, uh, but so it, it really did teach me like, okay, you just wait a little longer. You wait, yeah. you wait until you have the things built up. You wait, you know. Same with sewing. I, my mom started teaching me when I was like five years old how to sew, but first right. we did baby doll clothes, then right. we did simple things. And then by the time I was 12, we made my first pair of bell bottoms. And right. then maybe four years later, I was making a shirt, you know? So yeah. I guess I've just done the creative process for so long that I just understand it yeah. takes time. There's no rushing. Yeah. 
And it's better when you don't rush. It's a great le lesson. And I think that's a good lesson for younger people today, too, because everything is so instantaneous. It seems like it is. And it seems like you're so far behind everybody else. Yeah. yeah. And you get frustrated with mm -hmm. it, right? Because it it's really like, does. But then, like, the, all the Instagram, I mean, you're doing your stuff by yourself. Yeah. But when you realize what's behind the camera on a lot of these things, once people, you know, like a teenager or a 12-year-old, that their parents are cooking them dinner and doing yeah. their laundry and everything for them has lots of time to sit in their bedroom right? and upload to YouTube. Exactly. Right? Whereas the rest of us have other things Everything that we're else. doing. Yeah, or we if we're designers. artists, we have like 10 different things going on in mm -hmm. our head, you know? So it's hard. I mean, I struggle with that a lot too, of, of the process of like, um, you know, being good enough or when is it, you know, yeah. like my, the ends haven't met yet or like, you know, the creative process, I'm still in that like process mode That's rather true. than the, the like, um, part where it's all kind of coming together, but you can, you're, you're yeah. living in <laughs> a giant art project. Yeah. Pretty that... much. I've just sculpted my life just to be art all yeah. the time. I mean, I, I model, I teach, I, I do the YouTube, like everything. Yeah. I try to have like pretty much everything. If I'm not out hiking, I'm somehow yeah. making art. <laughs> I know, but <laughs> I think, but, but, but hiking is part of that creative Absolutely, process too. Absolutely. I'm out there finding all these dry yeah. things and working through. And the, yeah. the brain space that you yeah. get. And and well, what you said about Instagram really struck me because forever artists have always compared ourselves to other artists. I mean, right. that's just normal. Everybody compares themselves. So anytime you would go out to a thing or you go to a museum, but now it's all day long comparison. All day long. And I think that's the problem is it's good to feel challenged or to be like, right. I'm not as good as that person, but I want to be. But that's like once or twice a week, right? not once or twice an hour. Or less than or that. Le I mean, every yeah, minute. Well, yeah, a constant, constant. Yeah. And so I think that that's where it gets overwhelming is instead yeah. of being like, oh, this person worked hard. It's like, I'm so far behind all of these people. I agree. <laughs> yeah. I agree. That, I think that you're right because like normally we would be going, it takes this amount of time yeah. and then you have an exhibit. Yeah. And then it's like a person right. exhibit like once a year and you understand right. it took him a whole year to make all these paintings. Right. But now, and now the pressure is like, do something every good. Day, every post, everything, all the time, story, story, this, yeah, yeah. How, how is there time to even sleep? Like, you can't do that. It's yeah. not functional. So maybe all of this crisis that we're dealing with right now is, like, helping us shift our um, instantaneous gratifica gratification yeah. requirements and slowing down again. I would um, like to think so. I hope However, so, too. it gives a lot of people a lot of time on the internet. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I know. So we all get back, in, back right. to it. But, I know. Yeah. I've been noticing my engagement going, like, way up. I'm like, oh, I must be doing something right. Or nobody can leave the house. And so yeah. everybody's engagement's going way up. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So we got to capitalize on it <laughs> while we yeah, can. Right? Yes. But yeah. I think constantly kind of also sharing that um, – you know, time. It takes yeah, time. And definitely we use the time that we have um, effectively and we can't solve problems all the time immediately. You just can't. You just can't. And honestly, I think one of the best things about art, honestly, is that it can serve as such a distraction because like yeah. my hard drive died and, you know, I'm, I've got, you know, these things I all wanted to do, all these cities I wanted to go to are gone and all this, you know, things cancel. And I, and I literally, I'll get, go in there and start working on the mural and it'll be like four hours. Right. I and love that. Be like, yeah. I'll be like, oh, that's right. I didn't even have a negative thought in the last four hours. I was too busy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> exactly. So it exactly. really does because... Sometimes, honestly, when you can't do anything, distraction is the best. I know. If, if, what's that? It's like the Gandhi thing. It's like if you, if you, if there's a problem and you can solve it, don't worry. If there's a problem and you can't solve it, don't worry. You right. Know? Like exactly. It just it doesn't do anything. I'm trying to live that way yeah. too. Me too. Trying. I'm trying. Yeah, <laughs> trying try is the keyword. I can listen to yeah. Gandhi, but can I? Still yeah, do exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But I, I just, I, I love having you here, and I love like your process that is so fascinating to me, and I love the the living eating breathing of the art yeah. you know and and the reminder that it's just not an overnight thing and let and art is a process and yeah. you know there are artists that that their work when they're older in their 80s or 90s or whatever is like their masterpieces yeah, happen at that point exactly. right because they've been they've been practicing for and all for years. all those yeah. years and refining yeah. and like discovering and talking to new people and having life experiences and going on road trips or, you know, in a modern day. Yeah. Um, That's you know. so funny. That's funny because I used to always say that. And you know what? Being on social media, I have forgotten that, but I remember now that just, I used to say that, like, 
I used to say, oh, the nice thing about being an artist is that you're really not supposed to hit your peak until you're like 60 or 70. Like, it's not like these musicians or actresses that are like, right. you better be in the number one by the time you're 25 or you're yesterday's right. Artists, we're not supposed to get to number one until we're like 65. And so I used to always be like, man, I got all the time in the world. And I have forgotten that I used to say that because of social media. Yeah. So I'm so glad you just said that. Because, Good. yeah, I still got, I'm, I'm still 30 years early, baby. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. There we yeah. go. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, I hope I see you again soon. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs>